Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Emma Burgage. And I'm your co-host, Jose Camacho. Whether you're a player or a coach, or you're just passionate about what you do and you want to be the best at it, this is the amazing podcast for you. Today's episode is sponsored by MatchSet. MatchSet is an amazing company that provides players with incredible equipment and apparel. With MatchSet, equipment does matter and they make sure it won't slow you down. Use code Tennis with Emma to get 10% of Match Tennis today. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Amazing Tennis Podcast. Today, by your request, I don't know if you saw on YouTube comments, a lot of people are like, we want Jessica back. <laughs> Um, so a lot of people have been asking for you to come back because there's so many things we want to talk about and we said in the last episode like okay there's so much we want to talk about and I will be bringing you on and on more so if you have any topics specific topics that you would want to hear from us please write that also in the comments because it's going to help us absolutely we have million topics yes we will, like literally like, i i yes. know yeah um but we're trying to narrow it down so like today and we're going to talk about uh the difficulties the struggles of finding the right pro a tennis coach uh for a recreational player it's honestly for a professional player too it's it's tough as well um, just the right person for you and then also um, how much and what it really takes like how much money to spend in tennis as a recreational tennis player in Florida right mm -hmm. so these are the two main topics we're going to touch on um, and I think we could talk about this also all day sure so you started playing tennis three years ago correct yeah around when did you start taking private lessons I started taking private lessons mm, probably almost right away, but I guess they weren't private because there was another person in the class with me. So it was so, semi-private. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. For everyone that didn't listen to the first episode with Jessica, Jessica Levine. Um, Levin. Levin. God. Yeah, it's okay. Jessica Levin. Um, I like also Levine. Anyways. Me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's played tennis for three years, so we consider you as not a beginner, recreational, and I, avid tennis player that's yeah. climbing up the rankings yeah, and going hope. up in the divisions. That's hope. Yeah, I, you never know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I forgot to say because somebody did not, you know, that's listening did not listen to the first episode. But anyways, so you did not start really with private. It was a semi-private. Yeah, so it was two of you. Okay. Right. And then when did you start private, probably one-on-one? -on -one? I started private, I would say, like a couple months in to tennis when I started to feel like I wanted to keep up with the group. And it really helped me because I had got confidence on, you know, working specifically on what I needed, mm -hmm. not just what the group yeah. is working on. Yeah. Um, so since you started, what do you think? How many coaches have you changed? I can't even count the amount of pros that I have worked with. Like, really? Yeah. Like, like how many? I 15. 15. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> um, do you think this is um, OK? So why? Why do you think it's so hard? to find the right coach for you? Well, sometimes you base your performance on your pro. And if you're losing matches and you don't feel like you're getting any better, then you start feeling like there's some indi indication that, you know, why are my forehands going out? Why can't I get my serve in? Like the the mantra that goes through your head from the pro that you're working with, it's like, this is what they told you to do, so do it. And when you do it and it doesn't work, then you get frustrated and you're like, I can't, can't I, maybe I should try someone else. Mm. So what's the longest you've been with one coach? M maybe four or five months. Four or five months, okay. So you see, I'm a player, but I'm a coach as well. So just from my perspective, listening to your experiences, listening to everything, 
I, I know it can be really frustrating. It can be really frustrating finding a coach, especially for someone that didn't really grow up around tennis. Right. 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 You haven't. Or just being athletic. Or just being athletic. Like, I don't. Like I naturally might look like I can yeah, perform. Yeah, you look very athletic. Like I and and it kind of like fools people because I just have very poor like hand eye coordination, and because of that, and because I'm not athletic, it almost looks like I'm going on the court and joking around, mm. but I'm really serious. Interesting, because I mean, I think for you. I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard to tell, but I can understand your frustration with everything and, you know, finding the right coach because, as you were saying, one coach is telling you one thing, right? And then you go to another coach and he's like, no, 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 no. I, like, you cannot do that. Like, whoever taught you that, that's really bad and really mm -hmm. wrong. Yes. Right? Has this yes. happened to this you? This has happened to me numerous times. And the pros also, like, don't speak well of the other pros within the same um, club. So they'll all tell you, each pro will say, I don't care what you've learned. Wow. It's not the way I'm teaching. And this is how I teach. Um, so it's like, you know, it's very confusing. Um, and it's almost like you take these bits and pieces and you try to put them together. And then as someone that's like so new to tennis and I'm like trying to like reinforce this into my game, mm -hmm. I like can't even think about anything else other than like what pro I want to like hear in my head because what am I going to listen to? Who do I trust the most yeah. at this time of like pressure? You're on, you know, you're, you're playing. Um, and it was ve and it's just been really, really complicated. Yeah, I bet. I mean, I, I mean, my advice here would be, you need to stick with one coach for a year. You have to, and it's not going to be perfect. It's not, and it's, but you, you know, you're gonna have your ups and downs. But before everything, and I spoke about this in the previous podcast with other coaches, you need to have that trust. Right. 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 It's so important. So like even on the days that are like you don't feel well or they're telling you something like that you don't think it's right. But like, OK, I trust him or her and I know this is going to get me here, here and here and I'm going to just keep going. Right. Yes. But uh, it seems like to me that you haven't found anyone that you can really trust fully. So what happens is I do trust them. Oh, okay. And I do like give every single thing that I have into the practice, into playing, and I like absorb all of the information. Mm. Um, I also like feel almost like they're my mentor. You know, I, I win or lose a game, I run to them. They're on the, you know, I, I, whatever it is, like, I feel very, like, it's almost like a relationship, you know? Like, you are with them all the time. They see you play. It's a lot of bonding. And when you feel like you're not getting better or there's another pro that's, really trying to get you to work with them and say, listen, I see the way you hit your backhand. Like, you shouldn't be hitting it like that. Like, I can show you the way. Mm. Like, let me help you mm -hmm. and let me take you in. And it's like, okay, well, maybe the person that I was working with, like, it just didn't phase them. Or maybe that's just something they're not good at. So here I go with this pro and do, you know, forehands or backhands or whatever it is. And then it kind of just like changes into a different direction. Mm. Hmm. God, so I mean, I I don't, I don't know. I I wish I wish you could train with me, and then me too. You know, all of your me problems too. would be me solved. Me too. Me too. Me <laughs> too. Because I'm after this. I'm like, I it's Emma or done. It's Emma, Emma or bust. Seriously, but unfortunately, I cannot devote my time to you because you need, you know, now me going 
back on tour, I'm not coaching that much. Right. So I just do a few lessons here and there, or I mentor some of the, you know, players, and they come like once a week. Right. But you know, once I start traveling for tournaments and playing, you know, I'll go for like two or three weeks. I'm right. gonna be gone. So it's like okay, like. What do I do? But for example, the coaches that do work with me, we're all on the same page. Right. Right. It's important to have that good team of like, okay, um, we're all like, we might tell you something in a different way, but it's the same thing. Like we might tell you, you know, like I have my way of coaching. My other coach has, my other pro has his way of coaching. But we try to convey the same message. Right. Right. So at the end of the day, you're not confused. If you're like one day with me and then you come next day with him, it's not going to be a completely different like grip or this or that. Right. 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 It's going to be more like, okay, we're telling the same thing, but in a different way. Right. I think the struggle is and the struggle that you've had, it's like you go from somebody telling you follow through here to somebody telling you follow through here and you're like how wh- where do i follow through i that's like a huge deal to me because i spent the entire summer playing this whole thing about follow through and be able to see your watch oh, watch yeah follow I like through that one. and put the scarf around your neck oh i didn't hear about yeah, that yeah that one. was amazing and now i'm put hearing the scarf around. I like yeah that. put the th- scarf around and <laughs> now i'm hearing follow through to here and i was like I went an entire summer hearing like that is what the problem is in your performance. So like, why are you doing that? Um, and I did it today, and like the every ball went into the net. Oh my god! And the pro was like, "I'm teaching this to you. How is it you're not understanding what I'm telling you?" Oh god! And I'm like, I think you need to understand that this is goes against every single thing that I've been trained to do and not to do. So in order for me to do this, I have to now like backtrack on, you know, kind of like starting from scratch. Mm. And he was not receptive to that at all. Like it was more like, what is it that you don't understand? How are you not understanding this? And um, like, if you're not serious about this, then why are you here? Oh Today's video is sponsored by Lucky and Love. Gone are the days of ladies golf and tennis apparel that all look the same. Lucky and Love is ushering in a new age. The high-end woman's apparel brings options fit for the modern, expressive woman. Partake in the ultimate luxury and shop Lucky and Love for your new favorite fashion items for women and use code EB20 to get 20% of your next purchase. Oh my God. And I'm like... What do you even answer to that? I said, like, I am so serious about this that, like, I spent an hour and a half at the gym before my lesson doing squats and whatever it is that I'm supposed to do for tennis, cardio and lifting and, um, you know, devoting my entire, literally, my entire week into tennis and like how to better myself, how to like become a healthier person so I can be a healthier tennis player and better on the court and more um, like physically capable. And he was like, I don't care. Oh my God. What does that have to do with, what does that have to do with you hitting the ball? And I'm like, well, I, I guess it doesn't make a difference because I spent the morning here and now all the balls are in the net because I'm supposed to be hitting like this. And I'm like, I it's 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 hard it's hard because this pro is like the top pro in the center like he's like he's like coveted maybe that's why he's like more like full of himself oh yeah but like there's a part of me that's like i need that i need that like strict behavior i'm totally fine with honest feedback yeah like there are girls on my team that will hear run the ball and they will literally be like, my pro just told me to run on the ball. That is so rude. He told me, <laughs> he thinks that I need to move and I'm leaving. And like drops their racket and goes. And I was like, like guys, this is a sport. You know what I mean? Like take it. Like just, yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this is a sport. This isn't like, 
they're not telling you something that's so offensive that you could be like, you know, just dropping everything and leaving. But, you know, I can handle that. I can handle the, you know, Jessica, like you could have gotten there or like, one of the pros used to tell me, like, just go run your mailbox when you're at home. He'd be like, just run mailbox to mailbox. Like, stop at each mailbox and then run to the next one and stop at each mailbox oh and run this one. Because like, he needed, like, that fast, like, yeah, stop, the, and, stop go. and go, yeah, stop and yeah. go. And he's like, mailbox. And I'd be like, oh, okay, fine. Like, I'll do it. And, like, I, it didn't matter to me. I did it. Did you really do it? I really did it. You really did it. Really did it. You went, like, mailbox to mailbox. Mailbox here. to mailbox. And, like, I would I just. I wish I saw this and I recorded I this. literally, like, was like, this is what the pro told me to do. I'm going to do it. Like, toss the ball, toss the ball, toss the ball over your head. Lands on my face. It's all over the. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. That's just too bad. Like, whatever. <laughs> There's got to be, like, another strategy for me to be able to toss the ball because I'm not getting a black eye. And I was like, this is just not working for me. So, and then I would go there and be like, I would tell the pro. I'd be like, listen, I'm doing everything you're saying. And it's just not, I'm not, like. This is not working. It's not working. <laughs> Like, guys, how am I supposed to do this? And I throw the ball and it lands on my face. And I was like, that's it, I'm done. So, I mean, I love this. Yeah, it's just like you can take bits and pieces, but like you really need to have someone that is devoted to you as much as you're devoted to them. I agree. I agree. I think, I think that's a big thing, what you just said, you know that they're devoted to you. You go to these clubs, right? You, where coaches are burnt out. They work, I don't know how many hours a day, seven to 10 hours a day mm -hmm. in Florida on this heat, mm -hmm. right? Then they're like, they come and then they just start going through the motion, mm -hmm. right? You get there and then, or maybe even if you're one of their last lessons of the day, they're like tired, annoyed, and then they're like, tell you different comment, like, why didn't you run to that? And they start being like more aggressive or yeah. they feel like they can, you know? Mm -hmm. Like as a coach, you have to always put that person that's across the net like in front of you, right? Like they, they are more important. It's your one hour of the day. Mm -hmm. You came there to get better. Like, okay, like I understand you're tired and you're, you don't maybe want to do this right now, but I'm paying, right? I'm here hour of my day i want to get better so give me that and i want to go out of here feeling good right 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 i don't want to feel defeated mentally and yeah you can be rough on someone you can be tough as a coach but like at the end of the day you can't just like you know kill them to the ground and I they have, leave and they're like oh my god I've, and you start questioning everything right i have left lessons crying oh no like people are like <laughs> are you crying? Like in my car, I would be like, I would start crying because I tried so hard. And then I'd be like, oh, why is this not going in? The, like, why isn't this going? Why isn't this working? And they're like, well, did you practice? Did you hit against the wall like I told you? And I was like, no. And they're like, well, then what do you expect? Like, how, how do you think you're going to get better? So then I left and I was hitting against the wall at like 7 p.m., and like my husband and kids were like, where are you? And I was literally hitting against the wall and this ball's like landing into the basketball court of the game. They had to like stop playing for five minutes and find it. I'm like, this is, I was just like, here I am hitting against the wall. It's doing nothing. Thank you so much for your help. Like that, oh, no. thanks for nothing. And it just like frustrated me. And now I'm like, you know, like, I, I just left a lesson and, and the pro was like, you know, I'm telling you what to do. Why mm -hmm. aren't you doing it? And I was like, dude, if I could do what these pros tell me to do, I wouldn't need any of you. Like I would be like the next Serena Williams. <laughs> I would just be killing it because of course, like I'm here because I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. But it seems because of my like, I guess, like lack of coordination <laughs> that people just assume that like, okay, like she's probably like just joking around. And I'm like, mm. 
no, 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 you don't understand who I am. Like, I can't throw a ball. I, I don't, like, that's just not, this whole tennis thing for me is like a really big change in my life. Yeah. And it happens to be a physical sport and something that I really want to get better at. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really like trying different avenues of getting better, um, different clubs, different versions of teaching, um, different exercises. Are you ready to immerse yourself in the world of beauty, wellness, and self-care? Look no further. Rejuvenate is a medical spa in South Florida that offers a wide range of beauty and health improving treatments and therapies. Their goal and aim is to improve your quality of life and ensure a healthy glow on your skin. Make sure to check their social media and to visit their location here in South Florida today. Um, different diet, different, um, pretty much everything. Like there's, yeah. there's, there hasn't been something that I've haven't considered doing for tennis. And, um, for that, like it's, it's really frustrating because I get on the court and people are like, Oh, like I'll hit a shot and they'll be like, Oh, well you just probably haven't played in a while. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I know. Like I haven't like, cause I have been in another center playing for like five hours a day. So yeah, like, I just don't say anything. Cause it's like, you know, you're trying, but like, I it's, and now I like avoid mm -hmm. recreational play. I will not play doubles with anyone yet until I have a forehand that is in peccable, like in like almost like mesmer memorized. Mm. And how's that working out for you? I just have decided that that's what's going to happen. Oh, you just decided that yeah. today? Uh, well, a couple of days ago. Okay. Because I said, you know, if for whatever reason I'm playing doubles with or singles and I'm hitting the ball wrong, right? And I'm constantly just playing the wrong way. What good is it for me to be playing if I'm just yeah. playing to just miss hit the ball and cheer for myself? Like, I agree, yeah. It's... It's almost like it kind of brings you back to like mm -hmm. what you haven't, like what you're not supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And I mean, it's tough. It's tough um, because you, you don't want to aim like to have a perfect forehand. I, I don't think you should do that. Like, I think what you should focus on is having a really consistent forehand. Yes. That's you know? what I mean. Like, the technique, your technique is never going to be perfect. My forehand technique is not perfect. Like, I'm constantly, like, tweaking it a little bit, right? But as long as your fundamentals are good, you know, just a few things, you might not have a perfect backswing, but if your fundamentals are good, you know, if the grip is the correct one, if the contact point is in front, and some things that are going to prevent the injuries also because you don't want to have a weird swing, and then you, you know, develop some injuries. So I think as long as that is in place, you'll be fine when it comes to follow through, right? There are different follow throughs. There's no every time here, and it's not every time here, and it's not every time here. Nadal finishes here sometimes, a lot of times, almost all the time, okay? So there's no, in tennis, there's no black and white. Got it. Like, this is what you have to understand. And most of the times, it's not perfect. It's not, it's not good, you know? Like, and you have to be okay with that. Not, because if you keep, like, looking for a perfect shot, for perfect technique, it's not going to happen. And then you're going to get more and more and more frustrated. And you're going to be like, what am I doing, right? But it's situational. If the ball is low, you know, you're going to have to get more under it you know, and, you know, and, go up more. Right. If you want to hit a short cross court, the low one, you're going to finish here. If you right. want to hit a higher ball, your finish is going to be up. If you want to hit a more powerful ball, you're going to more, going to go more through the ball and then finish like on your shoulder. Like there are different things. There is no, you should not be learning um, just one way. Right. Right. But the fundamentals have to be there. You have to know what the grip you're holding and not keep switching grips, 
right? You stick to that grip. Right. And that's your grip, that's your forehand grip, right? 100%. And then you keep working on that. Not one time I tried this, one time I tried that, and it's like, what am I doing? I get you it. Know? So finding that right coach that is going to give you those fundamentals, but then, you know, you're going to be able to work on different things. So that's my advice. But, you know, you have to find somebody that you do trust, but also sticking with that person. Right. Sticking with that person, like go with your gut. Okay, this is the person I'm going to stick with them. Even if there's some days I'm like, I think I'm not getting better because you'll go up and down. You know, you'll feel like you're getting better. Then you're going to be like, oh, my God, I'm getting worse. Right. Then, and then it's going to come together. But if you if you start getting better, then you start getting worse, and then you switch a coach. Yes. Then you have to start all over again. Yes. Right? But I'll do that gladly because I'm like, um, I just lost like five matches. Like this pro obviously doesn't know yeah, what that, he's that, doing. No, no, you can't do that. You That's, can't do that. That's my, my. I, I trust that. Like I believe that. I just was like, if I'm not improving and then these other ladies who started at the same time as me are improving by going to their pros, then... But you you don't compare. you can't measure your success based. Everybody has their own path. Everybody has their own journey, right? You cannot compare yourself to other women how fast they're improving. Right. You have your own journey, and it might be longer than someone else's. Yes. But it might be faster than someone else's, and they might be looking at you like you're looking at the other ones, and you know that. Yeah. Right. So you need to stay in your lane. And you need to focus on yourself. Yes. Even if it's a longer process, you got to do it because otherwise you're going to be all over the place and you're going to keep comparing yourself to all of these ladies. And then you're going to be like, what am I doing? That's what's happening to you. You know, it gets like that in recreational tennis at the clubs. Like it starts to become like an identity thing mm -hmm. where you like get confidence or you lose confidence based on the matches that you've won and the matches that you've lost. Yeah. And it's almost like you're in junior varsity starting mm -hmm. and then the girls with the better records go to varsity and yeah. you just stay there. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of like just, you know, it's, it's not rewarding, but it's, I definitely need to like, master that level before I want to go to another one. Yeah, I get it. And you will. I believe you can. Um, you just have to focus on you. And that's it. And not, you know, like when we have also too high of expectations, we get disappointed very easily. You know, I have that problem, honestly. And then you're like, oh, my God. But just, you know, I know it's so like cliche, but you got to stay patient you got to just like work on it and trust the process and trust it, trust it, trust it. And it's going to click maybe for you in a few months, maybe in a year, maybe in two years. You don't know. But you guys stick and stop changing the coaches. I know. So much. I know. We yeah. need to stick with it. Yeah, just stick. But before you stick with one, tell me who it is and I'll tell you <laughs> if you, you should stick with Thank that you. one or not. Okay. I'll give you my advice. Good, good recommendation. <laughs> um, let's uh, switch gears here and let's talk about... A little bit about money. Mm. <laughs> because tennis, as we all know, is a very expensive sport, right? In yeah. every aspect. So what, um, is it more expensive here or up north? It is so much more expensive up north yeah. because you have to pay for the courts. Cor yep. And then you pay for the lesson, and then you have to like book the court time and assume that. And then you also have to find a player to play with who's yeah. like at your level or willing to play with you. Yeah. And yeah, it's really hard. It takes a lot of time. And they're, and another thing, they're all hard courts. Yeah. yeah. So in Florida, everyone's a snob. They'll only play on hard true courts yeah. with clay. And I'm like, no one's going to play on that hard courts. Yeah. So the fact that that like they wouldn't even it wouldn't even be like an like a luxury to play on a hard court. So having it here and having it accessible and having it where you join a club and if the court's available, go. Right. Like it's yeah. it's part of the fee. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, I think that that's, that's also part of like, it's so accessible here, yeah. right? Oh my God, it's the best. It's the best, like the pu like public, public courts. Public courts, you go and you play and, and they're beautiful courts beautiful. too. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. They're so nice and yeah. sometimes they're empty or sometimes yeah. there's people that are at your level that are willing to play or looking to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, it's so common, it's so popular and it's such a social, like it's good socially. Yeah. Um, and it's brought me like a lot of people, a lot of good people in my life that I'm very thankful for. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also like exposed me to people that I normally would never have interacted with if it weren't for this tennis team. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so it's almost like that would never have been in my social circle if I, if they weren't on my team. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you, what do you think, what would you say, what would you say how much a year do you spend for tennis, for everything from lessons to equipment a year? Emma, if I say that on this, I will be in so much trouble. You have to say it. Okay. Well, I, I would say <laughs> I can't. I really don't even want to add it up in my head, but I would say at least 15,000 a year. I mean, that's like, that's, that's the lowest number I'm giving you. Oh God. Because yeah, I, I mean, it, yeah, I, I thought you were going to go higher. I mean, that, I, I don't want to because my, if my husband sees this, then, yeah, your husband, then, when your husband right. is watching, it's going to be like, okay, you're up like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Or he'll be like, this is not a good idea, but like, it's such a good mental thing. It's such yeah. a good thing for you, like as a person. Um, but yeah, easily fifteen thousand. Oh yeah, between easily. the lessons. Oh please, and the outfits and the equipment. And yeah. how often do you string rackets? Um, well, I use uh, I use gut strings, all natural. Wow, so you're really going like the most expensive. I ones. I would like I'm like the Ferrari of tennis rackets. I'm like the the <laughs> epitome of whatever. I'm like I'm here five or six days a week. If you think I'm coming here with like standard yeah, strings, yeah. polyester, like <laughs> I I'm working way too hard to have like to show up here in, in that. Like there's I want gut strings. I want the best of this. Like I'm working like an animal, like at least have the best stuff. Like, Oh my God, that's awesome. Um, but, but they break faster, right? They don't break when I play. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't hit that hard. They broke once. So, so like you, like how often do you break your strings? Well, I broke my strings and I was so happy about it because I was like, this so is you broke such... one time. Yes. But Emma, it was the wrong, <laughs> it was the wrong location of where I broke it. Oh, where did and you I was it? so impressed and so thrilled that I broke my strings. And I was like, <laughs> I, I finally made it. Like I'm, I've, I'm at this level now where like I'm breaking strings on my racket. So I sent a picture of it to one of the pros and I was like, I'm, I'm there. Like, uh -huh. I've, I've like reached this like yeah. big time. And they were like, Jessica, like you didn't even break it. Like you, the ball hit a knot and the knot untied. <laughs> and because of that, there's a <laughs> hole in your racket. And it's like from the top. And I was like, they're like, is, is it in the center of the racket? And I was like, no. no, but I almost was like going to get scissors <laughs> and just start cutting to the center because I was so excited. And this was such a buzzkill. Like, how how could that happen? Like, I was so happy. I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, here I am oh busting strings, like killing it on the court. And then it's like she's like, no, it just fell apart because you hit the knot. And I was like, oh my God. Which means you miss hit the ball. Not only is this an embarrassment, but like you should be embarrassed the fact that you oh hit the God. ball at the top of the racket to make the string break. And I was like, mm. whatever. I'm just going to tell everyone I broke my strings. <laughs> whatever. Oh God. So, <laughs> so do you think it's, um, 
Do you think it's worth it, the money that you're spending yearly, you know, like for what you get from tennis? Would you say that? I would say that there's been like a tremendous improvement for my tennis game. There's no question. Um, is it worth it? I don't know because sometimes I feel like, did I get anything out of mm. that lesson? And like, oh, that was $100 just like flying away. Um, and like, you know, do I really feel like that was really worth my time? And if it doesn't feel like it's worth my time, should I even keep doing yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, there's no question, like, I've gone like leaps and bounds from what I would have when I arrived. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I think it's worth it, you know, like because you get so much out of it and I think you're on the right path. You know, you just gotta now, you gotta spend your money wisely. <laughs> and, um, you know, just with the, I guess, with the right people and uh, the right team around you. And I think, and I think you're, your future in tennis is bright. Just keep me around you so I can mentor you and I can tell you what's good and what's not good and I can guide you mm -hmm. as a mentor, mm -hmm. right? Right. And then from there, you're gonna do great. I was like looking for tennis mentors. Like I was looking for serious like <laughs> tennis psychiatrists, psychologists, like every type there, of sports I can be thing. Your tennis, uh, I, I, you don't, I wanted like a, <laughs> at least an MD to work with me. I wanted like somebody that was gonna sit with me and be like, let's discuss how, you know, the, the mental part of the game is yeah. gonna get you through it. And like, let's discuss like why you feel this way. And like, so, so I think this is great. We're gonna end here because in the next one, I really wanna touch up on the mental side of the game. But, you know, not just as a professional, you know, also as a recreational, because I was actually, I was in the hospital yesterday from my car accident and the doctor was a tennis player. No. And he was talking about it so much. He's playing in Boca and he's like, you know, I'm practicing great in practice, but like in a match, I can't get it together. You know, like I can't win a point. So it was like this whole discussion. And I told him, you know, we all struggle with the very similar things on all levels. It's just a different level, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm way, we're, hitting the ball harder, we're running more, we're doing all these things, but we hear it's the same thing, very, or very, very similar. So this is uh, one of the topics I really wanna talk about next time, and I know you do too, and also like the depression, anxiety, open about that a little bit, also how it ties into tennis, um, because we can talk about that a lot, and then maybe one more subject on top of that that we can sure. touch upon. Great. Yeah. Great. Cool. Well, thank you again of for course. today. Of course. It's happy to be here. Yeah, it was great. Great conversation. And let's go. I'm going to finish this coffee now. Um, yeah, have a great day, everyone. Yes. Thanks for watching. And we're going to put our Instagrams here that you can follow us. Perfect. And talk to you later. See you later. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Matchset. Matchset is an amazing company that provides players with incredible equipment and apparel. With Matchset, equipment does matter and they make sure it won't slow you down. Use code Tennis with Emma to get 10% of Match Tennis today. Thank you so much for supporting and listening to our podcast. Make sure to follow us on social media. And be sure to listen to next week's episode of the Amazing Tennis Podcast.